In this video, I'll show you the very basics of getting started with RetroArch on your iPhone or iPad, from running games to organizing it. You can find RetroArch free on the Apple App Store. RetroArch comes with a bunch of cores highlighted here. Basically, each core is an individual emulator for a specific console. You may have noticed there are multiple cores for the same consoles. I'll explain the reason later. Let's start with adding and playing games. If you haven't already, run RetroArch for the first time. This will create a RetroArch folder on your device. Now download all of the ROMs you want from the different supported consoles to your iPhone or iPad, and then open the Files app. And we'll go to the Downloads folder. Here I have all of my ROMs for various consoles. Earthbound for Super Nintendo, Ridge Racer for PS1, Echo for Sega Game Gear, and Eternal Champions for Sega Mega Drive. You can see they're in different formats. I have .7z and .zip. Fortunately, you can load these ROMs into RetroArch without extracting them. However, bigger files would take a long time to load if you do not extract it. So my recommendation is for you to extract the bigger files. And I'll show you this in a little bit. So first, let's move all of our ROMs to the RetroArch downloads folder. So press on the three dots on the top right corner and press select and select all of the ROMs. Now press the folder button on the center bottom of the screen and click on RetroArch. Click on the subfolder RetroArch and click on Downloads. Now press Move. Now all of the games are in the Downloads folder of RetroArch. Let's run RetroArch. So if you just want to play games, just press Load Content, press Downloads, select the game you want to run. If it's a compressed file, you'll see the screen. You can hit Browse Archive and select the ROM file or press load archive, there are multiple ROM files for the game, like for most PlayStation ROMs. It'll ask you to select a core. So there's a variety of Super Nintendo cores. Each core is basically an individual emulator. So if one core doesn't run a game well, like for example, the game freezes, or the music stutters, or there's some kind of graphical issue, just choose a different core and it may run the game better. You have options here. So I'm just gonna pick one. And that's how you load a game. So I'm going to exit the game by pressing the RetroArch logo and close content. Let's load Rich Racer Revolution, which is a large compressed .7z file. And we'll see how long it takes to load versus if we extracted the ROM. Since this is a PlayStation ROM and there's most likely multiple ROM files, you want to hit Load Archive instead of Browse Archive. You need to select the correct core for the console. This is a PlayStation ROM, so select a PlayStation core. So it'll look like RetroArch froze, but it's actually extracting the game to run it, and it'll take a while to load. It took about 32 seconds. So I'm going to extract the ROM files, and you'll see the difference it makes. So if the compressed ROM is a .zip file, you could just press the zip icon to extract it iOS supports zip files. So for example, I'll extract Eternal Champions. This isn't needed since the file is small, but I just want to show you how to extract the zip file. We can now delete the zip files since we have to extract the files. This is important if you want to organize your games. You don't want duplicate game files. So since Ridge Racer is a .7z file, which isn't supported by iOS, you'll need to download Unzip from the Apple App Store. The one I'm using has a blue icon. So open it, press on the plus button on the top right corner, press files slash iCloud drive, and go to the RetroArch downloads folder where the ROM is located. Hit browse on my iPhone, RetroArch, RetroArch, downloads. Press on the file you want to extract. You'll be added to unzip. Press on the three vertical dots. Press Extract Files, Unzip. Once it's extracted, press on the three vertical dots next to the extracted folder. Press Send slash Open In. Scroll down and press Save to Files. Save to the RetroArch Downloads folder. Now we could delete the files from Unzip. and also delete the compressed ROM from the RetroArch Downloads folder. 
Open Ray Tracer. So this is a .bin .q ps one ROM. We'll select the .q and select the PlayStation Core. You can see it loaded instantly. That's the difference and why I recommend extracting the large ROMs. Okay, so if you want to organize your games on RetroArch, click on the bottom center button, press import content, scan directory, press on a RetroArch folder, press downloads, and hit scan this directory. It'll scan all of your game files and match it with its database. Once it's done scanning, press on the bottom center button and you'll see the different consoles on the bottom with the games inside. The game art should load. So when you run a game here for the first time, you'll need to select a core. You only need to do this once. So select the core and hit run. If you add new ROMs, just scan again and it'll add it here. So I wanted to keep this video short. There's just so much to go over with RetroArch, but I think this video covers the basics that you need to know. I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching.